Great. Well, I'll just let everyone know that we're recording this session so we can share it with people afterwards. Um, and yeah, take it away, Adelaide. Thanks, Denise. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Adelaide. I'm the Creative Recovery and Resilience Program Officer at Arts ACT. Uh, Arts ACT is the ACT government's uh, arts department. So we do a range of things with and for the arts community in the ACT. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about that in a moment. Um, to, to, to start us off this evening, um, I'd just like to take a moment <coughs> to um, welcome you all to uh, reflect uh, on the country that we're on today and to acknowledge that country. Uh, we are on Ngunnawal land and also acknowledging that the Ngambri and the Narragoo peoples also have strong connections to this country and to the region around us uh, and to pay our respects to the elders who have looked after this country for uh, millennia uh, and the elders who still look after this country and um, for the, the way they hold country uh, and the way that we can then benefit from that. Uh, so. Uh, to take a moment to do that and it's it's dark out there now, now so you might not be able to see country but um, you can just have a little reflect on favorite place for you okay um so the creative recovery and resilience program uh, is a program of the ACT government uh, we are delivering uh, six projects in partnership with organizations uh, and institutions uh, in Canberra that are designed to provide a range of different opportunities for artists and arts workers uh, to recover their practice, uh, noting that you know, COVID has really significantly changed the way that we, we make art, the way we share art, the way we participate in art. Um, so to find some ways of recovery, recovering and acknowledging that that's an ongoing process. Uh, and also to, to not just not really build resilience because the art sector is already pretty resilient, uh, but to offer some some additional support to continue uh, building that resilience um, in, in the face of some pretty significant challenges and also some really kind of unique and interesting opportunities uh, that, we can, that we can grasp. Uh, so there's a range of projects as part of the overall Creative Recovery and Resilience Program. Uh, the residencies that uh, Denise and the team from University of Canberra and uh, Belco Arts will talk about today. Uh, there's also a number of other programs and I'll pop a link in the chat uh, to the Arts ACT website, which holds um, information about the range, uh, the other, the other, the range of other programs that are available through the program uh, and really encourage you to check those out. There's a couple of them that are open for expressions of interest now and there'll be a few that are being released uh, over the next uh, couple of weeks as well. Uh, I think that is all that is needed from me, Denise, so I'll hand back over to you. Great. Thank you so much, Adelaide. So um, I think I may have met some of you in this group before, but for those who I haven't, my name's uh, Denise Slates. I am an assistant professor in digital arts and humanities at the University of Canberra. Uh, and I'm also an independent curator and writer. And we're really, really excited and thrilled to be working with Adelaide and her team at Arts ACT as well as the team at Belco Arts to deliver this artist in residence program that's focusing on digital innovation and cross-sector engagement. So I'm just gonna really quickly speak to some of the ideas behind the residency program we're offering and also some of the skills and knowledge that we can share from UC before handing over to my colleague, Sam Hinton to talk more about the facilities at UC. So when we began the sort of co-design process for this residency, we started with a question. One that may seem kind of obvious, I guess, but it was, well, what is a residency? And this led us to that, that idea of well, residing or making a temporary home within a host organization, which got us thinking, well, what kind of you know, generative outcomes come from that experience of finding a temporary home in a new place? And for us, you know, a home provides a space of care and safety for individuals to experiment and learn, while also allowing them to build relationships that can support them beyond the life of the residency itself. So it's from those underpinning values that we've co-designed the program uh, with the wonderful team across these organizations. We're really looking forward to developing with the artists 
in residence, tailored programs of activities that can facilitate um, their creative and professional development specifically as they can take advantage of these strengths in digital and digital innovation and cross-sector engagement that we have both at UC and at Belco Arts. So a little bit about UC's Faculty of Arts and Design and also the Centre for Creative and Cultural Research, which are some of the kind of home bases that the artists will have access to through this program. So some of you may or may not be aware that the Faculty of Arts and Design at the University of Canberra offers a really vibrant breadth of courses at both undergraduate and graduate levels, which span film, digital media, creative writing, cultural heritage, architecture, web design, industrial design, and many more. And in addition to the rich specialist knowledge of our teaching staff, the faculty is also home to the Center for Creative and Cultural Research, which you may have seen written as the CCCR in a few spots. And this is a cluster of creative researchers that draw on varied forms of creative media. So poetry, performing arts, visual arts, film, digital arts, to develop projects aimed at enhancing community well-being, resilience, and also social justice. So through both the faculty and the centre, uh, we're really excited to be able to share with artists and residents technical skills in areas such as games de game design, augmented reality, 3D printing, and other modes of digital design and fabrication, and also to foster residents' relationship building capacity by facilitating cross-sector interactions that are really at the core of a lot of our research. And they often span the arts, health, built environment, heritage, and, and many more. Now, I thought I'd just leave at that level of detail because we can flesh out some more of the opportunities through questions, which I want to leave plenty of time for. And so I'll just pass on now to uh, Sam Hinton, my colleague, who can talk a little bit about the facilities at UC. Thank you very much, Denise. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Sam. I'm the Director of Digital Strategy for the Faculty of Arts and Design. So I have my fingers in all kinds of little digital things all over the place um, in the faculty, um, which actually does quite a lot of digital things. Um, I thought I would just show you a couple of pickies because it's probably a little bit um, more interesting than me just um, um, talking about these things. So let me click on the correct buttons and we'll see where we get to. So um, what we have here is um, the, uh, the, the sort of front of uh, what we call Workshop 7 at the university. So Workshop 7 is a facility that we had built, um, came online in about 2019, um, and it was custom built for supporting um, industrial design, um, architecture, and a whole bunch of other programs. And it's a kind of cool little workshop with a whole bunch of tools in it. It's got saws and hammers and all those kinds of things in there that you would expect, as well as people who can look after us and make sure that people like me who are used to working with computers don't saw our fingers off. Um, and we also have these kind of cool technical digital pieces of equipment, like this 3D, uh, this is a 3D printer. Um, it's not very exciting to look at because it's quite slow, but the nice thing about this is you can build something in 3D um, just you know on, on your computer and then you can send that to to the um, to, to the printer to produce um, a, uh, a physical object. And so this is used across a whole bunch of different areas from architecture to industrial design to fabricate all sorts of different 3D objects. Game design students also use this for printing um, the characters that they create. Um, we also have um, this thing, which is a CNC router. You may have heard of these before, may even be familiar with them. It's basically a big machine that um, uses a, a kind of a drill to, to sort of draw or drill out shapes in wood. Um, and it's a, um, it can be used to create all kinds of interesting relief um, uh, subjects. We um, also have, uh, this kind of cool thing, which is a little robotic arm, which at first is a sort of an industrial tool, uh, but we use it pretty heavily to do sort of creative things. So in this case here, the um, arm's been programmed to build a wall. So it's just basically picking up little blocks of wood and building a wall. 
very simply, but it can be used for all sorts of things. And one of the things it's been used for more, most recently is for um, extruding bits of plastic so that you can build uh, um, new objects like furniture and so on at you know, very large scales out of recycled materials. Um, so these are some of the bits of kind of equipment in the workshop um, at, at the university. There's also um, a range of other different tools and equipment which we've got access to. We've got uh, virtual reality headsets. We've got augmented reality headsets, uh, Microsoft HoloLens headsets, which um, allow you to kind of see the world around you um, and interact with a digital interface into that world. Um, and we also have motion capture suits, which allows us to do things like capture dance performances um, and turn them into digital uh, representations. Really importantly though, aside from all of this, is we've got all this technology and equipment, but we've also got people around who can drive all of this equipment and know how to sort of turn it on and make it do things. And uh, um, to take someone's idea that maybe is, is quite abstract and try and turn it into something tangible through the technology. So I guess, um, you know, without going into a lot of detail about all the technologies, that sort of hopefully just gives a bit of a snapshot of the different things we can do. Um, and, um, you know, hopefully also gives, gets across the idea that even though you may not actually know what technology you want to use, um, you could come in with an idea. Um, and uh, our, our um, technologists who, who work in the university can help to turn that idea into something practical through the um, use of some of this equipment. Um, I think that's enough from me. Denise, do you think I should say anything more? All good? I think that was fantastic. Thank you. Right. Um, I guess we'd be passing on to our lovely friends at Belco Arts next. Um, Jack or Genoa, who would who'd like to go first? I'm, I'm happy to go first, although I think Genoa will probably have the more interesting stuff to say. Um, so, hello everybody, my name is Jack Lloyd. I'm the uh, co-CEO and executive director of Belco Arts. Um, I'm a white man in his late thirties. Um, I have black hair, black beard, although both of those are rapidly graying, um, especially lately. Um, so Belco Arts Centre, uh, we were established in 2009 after many years of community action. Um, and that was uh, <clears throat> resulting in a really fantastic facility on the shores of Lake Chinandera. Um, in 2009, we, we opened with uh, galleries, dance studios, uh, some workshops and office spaces. Um, and we are a, uh, an organization that's, that's led through uh, community arts and cultural development practice. Um, in 2020, um, we were really excited to have uh, the completion of our stage two facility. Um, that includes a 200 to 400 seat black box theater um, and back of house spaces that go along with that. There's also a lovely foyer space um, rehearsal room, uh, some additional galleries, and a, uh, a cafe and bar soon to come. Um, and then lastly, in our sort of immediate surroundings, uh, the final, final touches are still being put onto the um, Belco boardwalk, um, which is a, uh, an overwater boardwalk and a lovely path that's going on the lake side of, of the art centre, um, but which is also going to be delivering an outdoor um, grassed area and amphitheatre. Um, and on top of that, we hope next year as well to be moving into some um, pretty significant uh, outdoor uh, projection activity as well, uh, which might be an opportunity for, um, for artists to explore through this program. Um, so we're a multi-art space. Uh, we've got programs across uh, the whole range uh, of art forms, and we, we like to support artists at each stage uh, of, of the artwork from initiation through to development and final presentation of work, um, looking to develop our, our skills and our capabilities as well in stretching beyond that in the future to supporting work uh, for presentation beyond uh, the ACT region. Um, so in terms of our contribution to, to the, the, this program and the activities um, that you might like to do, we're, we're really um, keen to, uh, to be kind of a, a, a toolkit that is available. Um, it's, it's certainly not intended that there has to be a, a public outcome, um, but we hope that some of those spaces might come in use, useful uh, for uh, the, the artists who are engaged. Um, and I'll hand over to Shinora as well, um, who can tell us, uh, tell everybody a little bit more about um, the people of Belco Arts. Hi everybody, great to be here. Uh, I'm a 45 year old white woman wearing a black and white print head scarf and uh, red lipstick and a beautiful um, shawl with a, a design on it from the Wajuk Nation. 
Um, first, I'd like to just reiterate what Adelaide said about um, that the creative resilience residencies are available from multiple sources. So I encourage you to follow that link that Adelaide sent through and investigate the various possibilities that are available to you. Uh, I would like to speak from both my perspective at Belco Arts as live programs officer, but also as a practicing independent artist for the past 20 years. Um, the creative recovery and resilience program, from even that title, we learn that there's a genuine care and action being taken on supporting artists and that that's become a major consideration of the ACT government. Resilience, the use of the word resilience also indicates a confidence in ACT artists, which I think is very special to take responsibility for themselves and a real trust that we are able to do that. And that's really evidenced in this suite of residencies that focus on artists and the integration of artists into non-artistic fields, should they wish to do so. Belco Art's role in these residencies is full of possibilities, including the use of our beautiful spaces that Jack was just speaking of, and skill sharing that you might find useful from within the team. And they can really reach across our entire team. And there's a few of us. As Denise mentioned, there's so many skills available through UC, including the games design, et cetera, that she mentioned. Um, and also with that cross-sector collaboration that Denise mentioned, you can move into areas like visual arts, creative writing, film, so it's, and, and many more. It's very exciting. From us at Belco Arts, just to give you an indication of some of the skills that we do have on staff, uh, we have specialists in lighting design, in festival management, in stage management, in creating community specific art and events, theatre direction, Japanese buto dance, physical theatre, touring theatre works, applied theatre or social drama, which aims to provoke and shape social change. We have skills in networking, how to sell you or your ideas without selling them and of course, producing. And we can go way outside the box as well. You never know until you ask, and we wanna hear the wildest ideas that you've got swirling around in your belly. Point being that if you feel like engaging with any of these or other skills that might be on staff, we can work with you on how those skills could contribute to your practice. But also there's no pressure to seek out any particular skills from us or you see because our primary aim is to support the development of your practice. And that could also look like rehearsal space, office resources, mentorships, or whatever. These residencies are completely defined by you. The residencies, I feel, are a phenomenon. The concept has come from Arts ACT's foresight to integrate artists into the fabric of our economy. Artists are a major thread in the fabric of the economy, but as independent artists, we usually spend most of our time creating sales pitches to prove that to the outside world. But that is not the case here. Here with these residencies, everyone is on your side. My role throughout your residency will be above all to support you, to yarn with you about your work um, and to offer or share potential pathways to whatever it is that you'd like to discover. Thanks. Thank you, Chanel, that was beautiful. Um, okay, well then I guess uh, we can open to questions. Uh, in terms of the best way to manage those questions, it might be good for people to raise their hands on the little reaction button um, or, or otherwise give us a little um, hoot in the chat. But is there anyone who would like to go first? Any questions? Oh, that applause. I'll take that, even if that was an accident. If that was meant to be a race. It wasn't meant to be a hands up, but we've gone with applause. <laughs> you all did great. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Hey, I'm, I'm Frankie McNair. Um, I just had a question. Um, I'm currently based in um, Melbourne, um, but the idea that I had would, um, uh, it would engage and work with uh, members of the like Canberra community. I'm originally from Canberra and I was just wondering if, uh, because I'm no longer living in Canberra, if I don't like meet the criteria, just wondering, because it sounds great. <laughs> 
<laughs> it does. Um, no, no worries. So what you'll see is on the selection criteria, selection el eligibility criteria on the website. Have you found the website with the details of the Yes. Yes. Great. You'll see that um, one of the criteria is to be what we said, it's ACT based practice. I believe is, is that the right wording, um, Adelaide? That um, ACT based practice? Um, yes, it is. Or, or connected. And there are some guidelines there um, that are provided or what, what can constitute that. Um, it might be one of those things that is sort of good to just chat about um, your particular circumstances and that and Adelaide has just popped that um, oh, link up there um, because yeah we I guess as well we understand at the moment that um, there are obstacles for people being able to get home and, and sometimes people are you know, for different reasons so um, I'd encourage you to yeah, send us an email and we can maybe talk about that, the specifics and see um, whether you might still be eligible um, under those guidelines by Arts ACT. Yeah, great. Thank you so much. No worries. Denise, there's some questions in the chat, I think. Oh. Where are they? Um, I'll read I can read them out for you. So um, one of the questions is, how many residencies are available? And what is the funding attached? So we have four residencies available. And so two which are for the emerging um, category and two which are for what we're saying mid-career slash established. And the reason why we've combined those two is that we have found, you know, in conversation that sometimes that the definition and the line between when someone feels established in mid-career can be kind of ambiguous. So we wanted to make that clear that we were open to people um, for, who might identify both those ways to be eligible for these opportunities. So um, for the emerging category, was that the question was around fees, was it not? Yep. Um, so fees for the emerging category are $10,000 uh, plus 10% super uh, on fee on top of that. And in addition to that, every artist is provided with a support package, um, which is a value up to $7,300. So that's to come to cover things like, uh, you know, some materials costs if you're experimenting in materials. Um, it's to cover, uh, you know, things like the in-kind support of access to spaces, special skills, especially uh, as Sam was talking about the training in the workshop kind of stuff. Uh, mentor fees. So part of this program um, is to connect you with a mentor. So if you're in the digital innovation space or if you're in the cross-sector space, they um, that we would work with you to identify that mentor and provide them with remuneration for their time. Uh, the documentation of your experience and if there's work in progress you'd like to document and also a budget for accessibility needs, which may be about um, specific needs that you already have or it may be if you are an artist about developing the accessibility of your work to be able to do some training in that space. So um, that support package is available at the emerging for all of the residencies, emerging and, and the mid-career and established. And then the um, baseline fee for the mid-career and established is $15,000 plus 10% super on fee. So is that clear? I don't see who asked the question. Any other follow-up questions from that? Or hopefully all that information you can find on our website um, probably explained in a more linear and coherent way than I've just done. So I recommend, recommend you hop on there. <laughs> Is there a hand up there just about fees, Simone? Oh, I just need to unmute yourself, Simone. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, I don't usually use this headset, so thank you for being my test one, two. Um, I'm just wondering with the cross-sector cross collaboration, if you could maybe elaborate on, I guess, give some examples um, and or guidelines on what you would regard as being cross-sector. Sure, that's a good question, actually, um, because obviously the arts are already in some ways, you know, interdisciplinary and kind of cross-sector. Um, in our case, I guess we are encouraging people to look even, I guess, further and really to establish new, new relationships. So I guess um, one thing that is quite a prominent um, collaboration in the UC context is between arts and health. 
So working across different groups, um, people in sort of the healthcare system specifically, but then also other kinds of um, developing particular programs with very clear kind of health outcomes. So that's one example. Um, I know at Belco Arts as well, they have their own cross-sector relationships um, and um, that, that, that they might want to speak to specifically. Um, but we would effectively speak to each artist about their own interests um, that we would see if there was a clear fit between one of these particular sectors that we were talking about and then we would develop that relationship with you um, and identify a mentor within that sector for you to be able to kind of get to know each other and learn a little bit about what it would mean to work across these different sectors. Oh, okay, I, I have one other question, if that's okay. And that's, I'm, I'm wondering if this is limited to individuals for each of the residencies or whether you would consider any kind of um, partnership or collective applications. Unfortunately, this year, we had to limit it to individuals. Um, I would love, I would love to be able to open it up to groups in the future. Um, yep. But as, we, as it is a piloting at this stage program, we, we have limited it, it to individuals. No, thanks very much, Denise. I didn't necessarily have a group or a partnership in the wings. I was, I was just interested. No, thanks, thanks for that. Um... No worries, you're welcome. Another question in the chat somewhere? I'm not seeing any. Um... So different closing dates for different residencies. So all the residencies should have the same closing date, but the emerging um, creative producer, the closing date is different for that one. Um, part of the reason behind that is to um, be able to onboard them um, a little bit in advance um, to have them sort of become familiar with the team and, and, and develop um, their relationships here so that once the artists start, um, they have got at least a, a small um, window of opportunity to be able to support them at that point forward. Um, and yes, that, so at least that it should be on the website that the residencies, I believe, are all closing on the 8th of, um, the 8th of October, yeah, and that the, uh, the applications for the producer role, the emerging producer role, is the first. Um, Will the residencies be ongoing? For example, they be available for the second half of 2022 or annually? Good question, Melanie. Um, we, would, we would love to think so. At this stage, the pilot project is only for um, this year until mid um, 2022, but we will certainly um, keep everyone posted if we are able to continue it from that point on. Um, any other? questions there that I've missed. Um, was there a question about developing an idea? Would it be, I'm trying to scroll back. Um, Denise, there's one question here that is, are the residencies eight weeks straight or can they be split up over a period of time? So yes, um, particularly given the current climate and restrictions that we're undergoing, we are um, going to work with um, residents to try and be flexible. Uh, we recognize also people have um, caring responsibilities, work responsibilities. So what we're saying is equivalent to um, full-time and we're saying 35 hours per week for eight weeks, which means that that could be done part-time. Um, we also recognize that it might be that people are able to do it in sort of two week bursts or something like that for the year. So that's something that we would work with you um, on to be able to develop a timeline that um, can foster your experience and your um, professional and skills development and learning experience. Um, and it also fits obviously within the parameters of what we can offer. Um, so he says, can we discuss our ideas with someone first before applying? If we have a wild idea. So I personally love hearing people's wild ideas. It's one of my favorite things. You can see um, Chanel was nodding too. Um, but something I just um, draw your attention to is you don't actually need to propose project for this residency. So if you take a look at something we put into our um, frequently asked questions document as well on our website, um, I really recommend people take the opportunity to read that. Um, because this residency doesn't have um, a requirement for people to produce new work, or to um, generate a, sort of an exhibition outcome. 
Um, what we're really interested in about is that the learning experience that we can offer you, how you would see this opportunity, this as an opportunity to develop your skills um, and knowledge and, and develop your relationships that could um, sustain your practice for the long term, can help you recover and maintain that resilience that Adelaide was talking about. So we love ideas, particularly wild ones, but it's not necessary to propose a project for this particular residency. Are all or most mentors to come from Belconnen Arts Centre or UC? Uh, so no. So, so the mentor, I guess the mentor fees that we have stipulated there are precisely for mentors who are external to our own organisations. So we'd be um, uh, connecting you potentially with cross-sector partners or um, people in the digital innovation space who um, we think might be uh, suitable, appropriate. And again, working with you to determine who those people might be. Um, but then, of course, the staff at Belco Arts and at UC are also able to provide that mentoring relationship as well and, and to sort of foster your development. So um, that's, that's in addition to the mentorship that you'll have at UC. Oh, Caroline, is there a studio at Belco Arts? I'll hand over to Belco Arts to answer that question. Yep, happy to answer that one. Um, so uh, there's a number of different kinds of uh, studios at Belco Arts. We've got a, a, a three or four small office spaces that um, would be use, useful for people to just have a space to work. Um, there's also workshops and like creative workshops and dance studio spaces. Um, what I'll do is uh, put a link in the chat for our higher page, which has most of them and has some of the, the room specs and things like that. Um, so that has everything pretty much besides the, uh, besides the office spaces, but you can probably imagine those uh, without too much prompting. There you go. Thank you. So I see a question, could we speak more about what we're looking for in cross-sector engagement? So um, I think that means in the application, what are we looking for um, in terms of, you know, uh, selecting people for that opportunity? Is that, that's the, I'm wondering whether it's useful to, for me to share my screen. Um, would people like that for me to just bring up the website so we can point to things at the same time? Yeah, cool. Let's see if I can do that now. Not, um, Great. So hopefully everyone can see my screen there. Yep. All right. So here we can see the different, so sort of the, the landing page that, that Adelaide sent through. And then these are all the different opportunities. So if we look at the cross-sector engagement, what I really encourage everyone to do when you're thinking about applying is to look down at, I guess we've got the EOI application process. So the EOI will be sort of, will be, it'll be a two-phase thing. So there's a written application, which we're trying to make is, um, sort of simple and um, as uh, easy to complete as possible. And then we'll have a second stage interview process from there. And what we're asking as part of that application process is for you to supply um, you know, a short, around 500 word, um, 500 word, what well, says 500, 100. That should be 500 word <laughs> written response to the specific um, position prompts, which are down below uh, your CV and a letter of reference. And so the prompts that we're asking for, particularly the cross-sector um, engagement is, uh, how will you make the most of this residency opportunity to benefit your creative trajectory? Please include references on your current creative track record. So in that case for the cross-sector um, thing, what we're looking for is, I guess, uh, evidence that your practice to date has maybe demonstrated an interest in looking at those kinds of relationships. Or, or if it hasn't been the case, to sort of speak to um, what your hopes are for the future trajectory of your practice um, and how you think the particular relationships that we might have at UC and Belco Arts will help you get there. How could this residency experience support you to achieve greater access, inclusion, sustainability, and cultural safety through your creative practice? That's something that's really important, um, not only to us, but to Arts ACT. So that's something that we'd like to see people be able to speak to. Um, and then indeed here, a question for um, one of the people who asked earlier about that, if you are a non-ACT resident to provide a little statement around that. And what we'll be selecting um, residents on for cross-sector is, uh, obviously their eligibility to be an ACT-based connected artist, 
um, that they have evidence of commitment to and quality of arts practice. Uh, and in the emerging category, we're talking about it, um, thinking about it as to a maximum of five years, but for anyone who's had career interruptions, um, they can be for a range of reasons. We're um, happy to have a chat to you about that and see whether you might still be eligible for the emerging category, uh, even if you it's technically five years since you began practicing. The potential benefit of a residency program to your creative trajectory and your ability to work collaboratively, collaboratively with, and with self-reflexivity. So that's something that we put quite a bit of thought into because of the fact that we think of in cross-sector engagement, also in digital innovation, and in an opportunity like this, which is really about kind of learning and professional development, what we want to see is that kind of openness to collaboration, to um, new ways, new and different ways of thinking, um, your ability to engage with people who are maybe not coming from um, the exact same position as you. So if you have any sort of experiences that you can speak to in your um, response that highlight your ability to work with different people and to be able to uh, be self-reflexive in your practice, then that will certainly be something that um, we'll be really keen to see. Understanding of principles of access, inclusion, sustainability, and um, then yeah, there's a little eligibility thing around insurance, which um, about liability insurance, we can, which we can speak to you in, um, speak to you about in more detail if anyone has any questions about that as well. And does that answer the question specifically around, I guess, what we're looking for as in what we'll be basing our selection off when we come to um, the cross sector uh, residencies, but also if you hop onto the digital innovation residencies, you can see the same selection criteria, or well, not the same, but the, um, those details on there as well. You're welcome, Rebecca. Uh, any, in terms of, yes, it's a good um, reflection in terms of, would we provide any support when it comes to uh, people submitting their applications? Um, what we've done, I guess we've Primarily, we're hosting this session as a way to um, put a face to the team behind it. Um, and so hope, what you can see on the um, website as well is the email address for the um, residency program. So if you have any questions uh, leading up to it, please feel free to just send them through in an email um, to us. And we'll do our very best to be able to respond to those. And so you can feel really prepared at the point when you're submitting your application um, that you've had support and, and um, clarity in knowing what's expected of you. So yeah, please don't hesitate to send those questions through. Any other questions? So how many residencies are there in each position? So there are so four residencies altogether, two emerging, two established, and in each of those categories, there is one digital innovation and one cross-sector engagement. Um, again, this is a pilot program, so hopefully in the, <laughs> in the future there might be more opportunities, but at this stage we have for each category, one in each of those domains. Any other? questions and also people can ask those questions that are more like a comment. Those, um, those are also welcome in this space. Any comments, feedback, thoughts? Some more questions here. Ooh. Are we required to nominate preferred spaces to operate our residency from in our application? So in terms of um, whether you would prefer to be based at Belco Arts or UC, uh, that's a good point. You're not required to do that. Um, that's something that we can do um, sort of through the process. And again, remembering that we do have that, um, that interview stage of the AOIA as well. So there will be opportunities for you to ask us questions and for you to um, so maybe flesh out some of that stuff um, through the application process, but then also afterwards. Um, I think we've had, uh, see this program continuing into the future. If I had a crystal ball, I would love to know. But at this stage, we are living in the present and um, taking advantage of this opportunity and certainly hoping that it won't be the last one. Uh, even though there doesn't need to be a particular project for the residency, I imagine the residency is meant to be self-led, is that right? 
no, and it is absolutely not a um, silly question. And you're right, it is. It is a self-led, um, it is self-directed. So there will be ample time for you to engage in that kind of self-reflection and that skills development. I guess what we're sort of emphasizing is that it's absolutely, um, you know, we want you to feel empowered to determine how this residency um, can support you. Uh, but in that sense, our focus is on, I guess, yeah, sort of long-term skills, long-term relationships um, that don't necessarily attach to a specific project. But we also understand that there are lots of artists and the way they work is just through tinkering on a specific project. So absolutely don't feel that if you happen to have a project that you're wanting to, um, to play around with, that you aren't allowed to test aspects of that out through this program, you certainly are. But from our end, if there's no expectation that you produce new work, that we're quite happy um, as long as you're going through that uh, skills and professional development, um, that network building experience, that that's the kind of priority for us. Will all applicants be given an interview? Um, we'll be shortlisting applicants for interview. Um, so again, we would we would love, I think, in our ideal world, to be able to connect with all of you. Um, and again, hopefully, this is uh, we'll have opportunities to do that into the future. Um, but at this stage, we will be going through an initial shortlisting um, before we move on to the interview process. Uh, do we have access to facilities both at UC and Delco Arts or just one of the orgs? So both, both. That it, the idea is that it's a program that's bringing us together as organizations and you. So you'll be able to hang out with all of the fine folk across, across them. Great, thank you. Um, I think is that it? Is that any other questions that I've missed? Any other, there we go, we have a little bit of time. Are you looking for artists to form longer term relationships with UC and O'Connor Art Centre? Certainly, yes. Um, that's something that we would really love, particularly in terms of the Centre for Creative and Cultural Research. Um, we are, you know, seeing this as an opportunity for people to become, you know, affiliate members, to keep in touch, to be ongoing um, collaborators and, and, um, and contacts within the kind of creative ecosystem of our university. I'm not sure whether Jack and um, Chinoa, you'd like to speak to that as well, or I feel like I've been hogging the mic. Um, certainly the more people we can we can meet in contact with and the, the longer the relationships we can build, the better, but we certainly wouldn't be, um, you know, uh, judging applications more strongly just because we thought we might um, have a, a, an ongoing relationship. Um, it's certainly, if, you're, if you've got an idea that uh, for a process that's not likely to be ongoing with us in the future, that wouldn't be a disadvantage. Yeah, I think it's just um, part of the organic process of meeting each other, right? Is that we meet and we discover more about each other, about various possibilities. And uh, regardless of whether or not you're specifically forming a relationship with the institution or you're forming relationships with the people that you meet along the way, um, which um, is a given and uh, certainly the most joyous part of the process for me. Yeah, and I think that's a, a, an important point as well um, that both Jack and Janelle raise is that, you know, it may be that you have enduring relationships with those external mentors and, and, that, and not us or whatever it might be. I think that we get excited at the prospect of meeting new people and, and bringing new people into our creative ecosystems, but there will certainly not be any obligation beyond the residency should you, um, should you want to move on and do other things. Yeah, and if you find Jack really annoying, like, and hold it against you if you prefer to do it. Can it can happen, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Any other questions? We have 10 minutes left. So I'm sure that um, particularly if you've just come from the other information section, you might be ready to go to dinner and or something like that. But otherwise, we're very happy to feel any questions or comments. Denise, I think Natsuko had one question that maybe you oh. answered about, um, can we use both uh, facilities, UC and Belco? Yes, and that's a strong, that's a strong yes in that instance that we're um, excited about um, offering the whole suite of, um, of facilities and, and opportunities across both the organisations. Um, so we've got another question. 
Okay, so a question about that particular um, prompt, which is please include reflections on your current creative track record as evidenced in your CV, as well as the facilities, networks and environments at Belcoa you see. So I guess this is really speaking about us trying to get a sense of the potential for this opportunity to support your ongoing creative trajectory. So as part of the application, you're submitting a CV, which tells us what, you know, what you've done. But sometimes we need a little bit more, or it's handy to have a little bit more information about, you know, some of these projects that maybe you've been involved in, or some of these works, you know, um, and how they have led you to maybe be interested in different cross-sector opportunities, or how they may have um, led you to be interested in uh, exploring new kinds of digital technologies to support your practice. So basically that provides you with a space for us to help us interpret your your sort of track record and, and your artistic trajectory to date. Help us understand sort of what you've done and also where you hope to go with it. So that clarify it a bit? Oh, Mark, was there a question from Mark? Oh yeah, I had a quick question. Um, <laughs> no, just a, like, a, like even looking outside the bubble of the application, I, I think it's just really inspiring the, that diversity of both uh, university institution as well as an arts centre coming together. Um, but the elephant of the room is there's, you know, 50 people here and a small number of applications. Um, for the people who might not want to put in an application or put one in and fail, um, what are the things that we could do to, um, yeah, engage still, I guess, um, in that space, but maybe in a less intense sort of manner? Well, thank you for those kind comments. Um, yeah, I think we're all really excited about bringing together um, Belco Arts and UC for this project. And also, um, it's really wonderful to um, to hear um, that you know the interest in engaging with us across our institutions, even if it's not through this specific opportunity. So, I mean, I guess one way to do it is that you can, um, is it with that with that email address that we've provided um, for you, if you're even if you're not um, uh, specifically interested in this opportunity to let us know that you are interested more broadly speaking in um, engaging with the, the work that we do. And we can do things like make sure that you are on um, our sort of mailing list so that you can know about other events that are, that are coming up or other kinds of opportunities that are coming up. Because um, absolutely, you know, one of the things that is really exciting about this opportunity for us is to get to know um, the creative ecosystem at UC, at, 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 in Canberra, sorry, <laughs> we know UC, um, in the ACT more broadly speaking, to, um, to feel connected to the community here. And so we'd love to have those ongoing conversations and, and build those relationships beyond this particular opportunity, if that's something that you're interested in too. Cool. Oh, Susie says, great question, Mark. Could there be ongoing exchange forums to develop the broader ecosystem? That's a great idea. Um, ex well, that's, and as well, it's something that you may, if you go to our website, see that um, one of the uh, programs as part of the ACT, um, uh, recovery and resilience program is the forum, the um, the creative recovery and resilience forum that we'll be developing. Um, there are some opportunities uh, there. I won't go into the details there because this is just for the residencies. But um, hop onto that website because that will be effectively a, a forum, a, a place for exchange. There'll be programs that we'll be um, delivering as part of that, and so we can absolutely. Um, if people are interested from this particular group, also keep you in the loop about that program and, and how that can be a place for exchange. Any hands up? I think, uh, Stephanie just asked, could you point us in the direction of others who have completed residencies in the past? Oh. Sorry, what was that? It's about oh, fourth from the bottom. Oh, could you point us in the direction of others who have completed residencies in the past and how they found it, what they achieved? Um, so I guess in the case of UC, um, we have had residencies uh, in the past and particularly in relation to our Poetry on the Move Festival. Um, we've had um, residents, so, so poets and writers and residents. Um, this, this is a pilot program, so we haven't actually run this program specifically before. If you're interested in sort of artists 
experiences and reflections in working with UC more broadly speaking. Um, and that's something that we can try and sort of connect you with specific, specific people um, who can hopefully give us a good reference for, of course, to give us a very a glowing reference for what it's like um, to be an artist engaging with um, our organization. But yeah, this is the first time we're running this particular program. So um, we don't have, uh, I'm afraid we don't have those specific, specific contacts we can uh, connect you with, but I'm very happy to um, connect you with other people if you want to shoot me an email. Some people have got this social media. Um, okay, and yeah, so also um, a good thing to bear in mind is that um, we have the website, which I mentioned a few times, but we also have social media accounts, um, which we'll be using to promote the different kinds of opportunities that are happening, um, coming up over the next little while, um, reminding people to get their applications in, that kind of important stuff. So um, for people who use Twitter or Instagram, or Facebook. Um, if you hop onto our website, I think you can see are there direct links to our social media accounts from the website. If not, we can make sure we can pop them in here. I don't know if um, Oliver, are you able to? Oh, there we go. Oliver in the chat has just popped up links to our social media accounts. Um, so they're, they're, they're also on our website on the very front cover when you go straight onto the CCCR website. Fabulous. Thank you. I knew you'd have the answer. The um, fantastic. So yes, so that's a good place to get um, regular updates about programs that we've got as well. Um, a good way to keep in touch. Any other questions? Two minutes to spare. I guess I feel like I've been talking for a little bit, so I don't know whether Sam, uh, Shanoa, Jack, you want to say a little something before we head off or... Well, I think, Denise, you did such an amazing job of handling all of those excellent questions. And I think because we're working out these residencies as well, like they're very, um, uh, they, they are, like Denise said a few times, they're really a pilot and you're really going to help us discover just how big a potential they can be. Uh, and just to reiterate, if you would like any uh, advice or thoughts or discussions around um, any ideas that you have, when working towards an application, then um, all of us at Belco Arts are available to you. Thanks. Mm -hmm. uh, regarding cross-sector, is there a list of faculties, etc.? Um, there is, so you can go onto our website to navigate um, and, and find out a lot of information about UC and, and specifically, I guess, um, there are certain uh, things that we can point you to, but maybe the best thing to do that's to go is to send us an email because then we can in that email just point you in the direction of a few projects that might be useful for you to sort of see that are uh, examples of the cross-sector collaboration that we've been, that we've done previously. Um, that might be the easiest way forward. Great. Well, it's 7.30, folks. So thank you, everyone, for coming. It's been wonderful to see um, some faces on here, uh, particularly um, when I know it's the end of a long day for, for many of us. So thank you so much for coming. Um, we really hope that we can keep in touch um, along the way. And don't be hesitant to send us an email should any other questions arise. Thank you. Bye, now.